Lucy Arnaz, you've been on the show a few times already, and I, I just saw you a couple of weeks ago or a month ago at that fabulous Broadway Fights AIDS thing, and I thought you stole the show. Oh, Lisa, thank you. What a night that was. I was flattered to be asked to be a part of that group. Wow. I felt like I was watching some Broadway history that night. You were. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, with yeah, Cheetah, absolutely. Cheetah yeah, Rivera. Was great. Yeah. And you've got gorgeous legs. I don't know how you keep up those legs. Oh, thank you. You do, you do. So tell me about what interested you in this event on Friday night. Talk to me. Well, I'm a part of, um, this sponsored by the Unity Church, this, this event, and I've been a part of uh, Unity for about the past six or seven years. Just kind of stumbled onto it through my good friend, composer, songwriter, David Friedman. And uh, he, I sing a lot of his songs, and I went down there one day really just to rehearse a song with him, and he said, oh, just sing it at church one day. And I, I stumbled over this wonderful philosophy for positive living. It's like a, you know, it's, it's not a religion, it's a spiritual philosophy, and it kind of changed my life. Anyway, long story short, we do this retreat every summer, which I love. We go out into the country for about six days, and at the end of it, we do this cabaret night where a lot of the people who are part of the retreat get up and do whatever it is that they do. And it turned out that um, we have a lot of talent in this group. And so this year we thought that a lot of people don't know about Unity here in Norwalk. And so we said, well, why don't we do a big show? Let's do a talent show, basically, with Broadway talent and movie talent and some local talent. They're, the only thing they have in common is that they're all really good. And it puts Unity kind of in the forefront of people who may not know we're here, but it also raises money for two really great causes. And I just said yes right away, as did my husband Larry Luck and Bill and, and David Friedman's performing his songs and um, some wonderful Broadway performers from Phantom, and Rayessa Katona Bennett and Nancy Timpanaro, a big Ethel Merman type fabulous voice of Lena Katrakis, who's a soul pop rock and roller. It's going to be like all over the place. It's comedy, a- Bobby Horowitz doing her comedy stuff. It's really fun. Something I don't think you ever see out here locally like this. Not really, no. That's you what's know, so cool about it. We don't do stuff it. like this, right? We that should. Is- we definitely yeah. should. And, and so is Unity Church actually a building, a church that people can go to on Sundays? It, it, and- well, it, and it doesn't look like a church because it's really, I mean, we call it church because we don't know what else to call it. It's a place to go and be, you know, have spiritual thoughts and learn tools for living your life. But right now it's located above the Ford dealership on Main Street okay. in Norwalk. Okay, that's good. You know what? Our synagogue started above the Baskin Robbins, yeah. you know, uh, in, in, and it was there a long time. Yeah, that's Reverend, good. Reverend Sean Moniger, who is just amazing and, and has been there for, I don't know, uh, quite a while, long, longer than I've been there, uh, refers to it as a lovely unity lounge above <laughs> the dealership. And it's quite fun. You know, it's, there's the people who go there. Uh, it's non-denominational. You can come from any other uh, religion and don't have to have left your other religion. It can be an, an amendment to what you also believe and teaches great courses during the week. And on Sunday we go and, and he does magnificent talks about life and has other you know, guest speakers at the time. And, you know, it's kind of we, we honor the universal truths that all religions have in common. And it's just... For me, it was a, a new way of thinking that, you know, people, all people are all good, period, end of story. And uh, I live it. It's, it's, it's taught me to, you know, live my life every day in gratitude and use my experience and the feelings that come up with everyday stuff uh, to mature and figure out, you know, who's God? What does he want from us? What do you think the main plan for this universe is supposed to be? How does the universe work? How, what are we down here to do? And... You try some of these things out, and they're all theories, really. So is every religion, when you come to think of it. Sure. It's a theory, and then if it starts working in your life, like Course in Miracles and stuff like that, you go, oh, this is, this is working. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling better. I do better. So I, I, th- I would do pretty much anything for um, the folks at Unity, but um, that's what we're there for. And we got a huge, big hall to fill, and we filled a goodly portion of it, but we want to raise as much money as we can for the Cancer Center and for the Abuse uh, Crisis yeah, the Crisis Center does amazing work out here. It's amazing. And, uh, so the more money, the more tickets that we sell, the more money they're going to get. You know, it's, it's interesting because I heard Dr. Maya Angelou, she was in Greenwich on Saturday night giving a concert that I had never seen her in person. I had had the chance to speak to her on this show earlier mm-hmm. that week, but I got a chance to witness her in person. It was really extraordinary, Lucy. If you've, if you've never seen her in person. You, I, I love this woman. I really, uh, yeah. really do. And I just watched the master class she did on the new oh. own Oprah Winfrey Network. 
artwork, which was brilliant. Oh, I need to see that. I didn't even know that. But so she talks about you, you talked about universal truths. What got to me is she quoted a man by the name of Terence, who was a Roman philosopher who had been a black slave who was freed. And he had said something and I'm not quoting it correctly, but he had said something to the effect that to the extent a human being does something, we are all human and we are all capable of that. Yes, absolutely. Well, one of the main truths that we believe at Unity is that, you know, it's a big belief in Jesus, but as our friend and way shower, and that the truth of it is in the Bible and in the stories of the Bible, you know, they've been rewritten and written in different ways for so many years. But really what he always said was, you will do these things and greater things. You will do these things and more. So my belief is that everybody has the spark of the divine in them. We are all God. I wake up and go, hello, God, hello, God, hello, God, hello, God. And that includes the usual suspects, like people say, what about Hitler? You go, yep, yep, that's God, too, hate to tell you, but God, you know, making bad choices, that's all. Life is about choices. And really, I believe that what we're meant to do down here is, as Sean says, be happy, joyous, and free. And anything else is a waste of time. So, you know, it's, there, we're, we're, eternity is now. Uh-huh. It's, all, it's all right now. We're living it now. Everything is possible right now. And between wonderful new thought uh, thinking like uh, A Course in Miracles and what, um, you know, the, the Fillmore started with the Unity Movement, and David Friedman gives a marvelous course uh, every Monday night at Unity, which is called Thought Exchange, which is really just about everything is possible. And what it's not, and it's better than the secret because it explains how our own sensations get in the way of our positive thinking. If it was that easy, we could just think positive, say what we want, be specific, and everything would happen. Well, why right. doesn't it happen? It doesn't happen because stuff comes up based on beliefs from the past and. So, you know, I don't know about you, but I need all the emotional tools I can get these days. Sure. Especially in the world the way it is right now. Sure. Which I guess the world has always been frightening in various ways over the centuries. But, you know, you want to be able to wake up every morning and go, okay, I don't know what anything is for. I'm still going to approach this uh, in a positive way and with gratitude and find out how I can shine my light. What, what ought to be done by me today? Now, your husband, Lawrence Luckenbill, you guys have been married a long time. You have 40 years four, this year. Oh, my God. I'm 29, Lucy. I'm catching up. Isn't that great? Unbelievable. That's Actually, great. it's astonishing is really what it is. <laughs> astonishing. It is. But, um, but and, you know, especially with the same guy, right? But yeah. and, and you have four kids together? Four? Well, I have birthed three and raised five. He oh. had two beautiful sons okay. before I married him. Okay, so now is is Lawrence somebody who attends this same church with you? Does he share the same view? He totally does, and and he's more of a reader. He'll go over to Unity with us when he feels like it, and he'll go to the retreats, and he sits and has long conversations with, with Sean Moniger and with David Friedman and with myself and the other people there. But he doesn't always feel like he has to show up uh, for the Sunday service because it's not like Catholic. It's not like those other things where it's a mortal sin if you don't go. You want to go, go. You don't want to go, so you don't go. You know? okay. It's a place to go to, to get new information. But he reads it crazy. He's gone like beyond me in, in researching these new thinkers and new thought thinkers and things like that. And, and just, just to be clear for me, because I just finished that extensive article on Scientology in the New Yorker, which... Oh, yeah, we're it, not like that. We're well, not Scientology. I, I just, I could, I have to tell you, Lucy, it was... Um, yeah. It, it was very troubling to me, actually, that article. First of all, I had no idea that Scientologists demanded an average of $300,000 from every person who joins their faith. That was a shocker to me. $300,000 is the average amount of money they spend on these auditing lessons, which sounds like their religious way of calling it therapy. I don't know what else you'd call it, really, in English. Well, I guess it's not a religion for every man and woman, then, is it? Because you have to have a lot of money. to. You, you have know. to have a lot of money. And the other thing was that there appeared to be a very... D- you know, and I'm curious to know if you have any insight into this, but a very special Hollywood connection, a very specific emphasis on making celebrities feel important, but more to the point saying to regular old people, if you want to ascend up a certain ladder in Hollywood, being a Scientologist is probably not a bad way to go. Wow. Oh, yeah. You should no, read it. It's really I something. Don't, I don't aspire to those beliefs. I respect people to believe them. You know, everybody can have their own thing. My, my stuff, the stuff that we kind of 
do people should come and check it out but it's really just very simple positive stuff that you know helps erase some of the guilt and the shame that was pounded into us uh you know early on by other religions and things and you can it, it in, encourages us to read things like Eckhart Tolle mm -hmm. fabulous you know the new a new earth and yes power of now and things and Charles and Myrtle Fillmore started this movement I'll call it a long long time ago just based on the power of the mind yeah it's based on what you're what you're capable of in your mind and and how your mind is right there you have a the higher power is connected to the higher omniscient oneness it's everything is one and you tap into it and things are there for you already all you have to do is be willing just be willing well i have and, to say lucy i've seen you on stage recently and then also in burland which wasn't that long before and you bring such a present energy to your performances you are so there the audience is so with you uh, i mean that to say not merely as flattery but as a real fan i i love watching you perform that's very kind. Thanks, Lisa. Well, I love what I do, and I guess, I, you know, it shows, I hope. I, I really love getting in front of people and inspiring them through words and music and stories. And, and now, of course, you know that you know about the amazing small world story of your daughter, right? Have you, you heard that one? Have Tell you heard? Me. Okay. So your daughter, Catherine, who is a gifted and talented singer, comedian, the whole bit. Right. Right. She babysits for my sister's grandchildren. Oh, yes, right. Yes, I do know that story. Oh my God, I forgot about that. That's right. Isn't that hilarious? And the only reason she found out about it is they sat one row apart right. in that, you know, that Broadway fight equity thing, and she overheard people talking, and then anyway, isn't that hysterical? At the cast party thing. For, yes, yeah. exactly. My daughter, is. she's so brave and wonderful. You know, she's got a, a degree in theater, and she's got this wonderful show that she did at Don't Tell Mamas that sold out. But she teaches preschool kids, oh. and she's going back to school for her graduate degree oh. to be a teacher. Oh, I didn't know that. It's hysterical. I mean, she's so bold and brave to say, you know what, Mom? I know I did this, and I like that, and I'm good at this, but I think I want to have a real life. Aww. I want to be able to get a, a paycheck, you know, and, and raise children and have a vacation. And, and not. she sees what it's like to be in this business. It's hard. You it know? is hard. Yeah. Yeah, you live by the phone calls and, and the next gig and ha she thinks teaching will be easier, I don't know. But I don't know. But Lucy Arnez, congratulations to you and all your endeavors. I'm so glad you joined us today.